Hey everybody, this is Heather Kate with PeacockandPaisley.com, spiritual coach for the creative soul. And here in the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Loving Yourself group, um, this, um, this live is about how to um, heal your thoughts um, and control them after being in a devastating relationship. Um, it's one of the most common problems, the most fundamental problems that um, comes up because when you're in a relationship that has made you feel like you've been through, you know, the tumble cycle in the dryer or uh, you've been tossed by a really big wave or um, you have, you feel like you're in a, in a washer, like you just keep going over and over and over recycling things. It's really hard um, for a bunch of reasons. One is because one of the reasons that it's difficult is because um, you are most likely tired, physically tired, mentally tired, emotionally tired, spiritually tired. I take a whole person approach to healing. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is a broad range of techniques and the perspective is holistic. It's kind of, um, like functional medicine. Um, you look at the symptoms and, um, and you help to heal those. As you heal those, more symptoms may pop up because there's many layers to all of this. Everything's integrated. You know, you're not a hefty bag with a bunch of garbage in it. You can't just like toss out the garbage and then be fine. You actually need to heal all these different parts of you. And the good part is that having all of these different parts that integrate and work well together is what keeps you operating as a fully functioning human and as a well functioning human. Once you get everything running together, working together, um, and it's not as hard to do as you might think. So, um, there's hard work, but it's not as mysterious as it, as you know, sometimes it may seem. So as you're watching, um, whether you're live or popping in, I hope you'll leave me a heart in the comments to let me know you've been here. Um, leave a green heart. This is the thing for, Oh no. Okay. So leave a green heart. Um, if you're on live and, um, leave me a purple heart if you catch this on replay. Um, and if you have questions, um, whether you have them now or, or later, definitely um, pop them in the comments. And, um, and if this is something that you think might benefit a friend, see if you can share the link. I think you might be able to share it with them even though this is going live just inside the group. Um, because it's one of the things I found really um, fascinating and alarming is when I did some some research um, in some of the other um, some other Facebook groups with like 400,000 people in it now the women helping women entrepreneurs group is huge um, I haven't been very active in there I don't know if you guys are if you are let me know what you think of it but um, and it may be where some of us actually connected um, but I did some research um, and I think I had 2,000 responses um, when I stopped counting. Um, and they were, yes, I know I'm in a narcissistic abusive relationship, or I think I am. And no, I don't think I can heal from the mental part aspects of it. Um, uh, most people, I'd say it was about 90% of the people that responded to me in that group and then in other groups also said that physical abuse was less of a problem for them than emotional and mental abuse, um, or the damage that they, you know, had sustained. Um, I'm sorry, that's my dog having an interview with that. I don't know if you can hear him woofing, but it's okay, buddy. It's okay. Um. So apparently he sort of agrees about some of these things. Um, I disagree. Um, you know, there are physical things that can happen that you cannot repair. You know, you can't replace lost body parts. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the scars and the physical pain that you can, and you know, that is sometimes inflicted on people, you know, that's not always something that you can get away from. Whereas the mental and emotional stuff is actually something you can heal. You can, the important component to that, the, the key to that, the secret to that is to realize that you are a spiritual being. 
having a physical experience. And so you have to heal on the spiritual level as well as on the physical level and on the mental level, on the emotional level, all of these things. We say levels or aspects, but really they're all integrated. So in order for you to really heal your thoughts, you've got to address the spiritual side. Um, you can check out my YouTube channel and my website and look for cord cutting. C-O-R-D and then cutting, like, you know, snip, snip. Um, that is a simple, easy, quick spiritual technique to use to, <coughs> excuse me, help you disconnect all unhealthy ties and bonds with the abuser. Um, there are, so cords, to explain what a cord is, a cord is like an electrical cord, like, you know, those big extension cords that are orange, or yellow or you know whatever color but they're um, I'm gonna go with that example and then I'll explain more detail after that um, but it has a plug on both ends not just a plug on one end and a receiver on the other one but plugs on both ends it plugs into you and it plugs into the other person the thing that you want to do is unplug that plug from you and the most important part is actually cutting the cord um, and then also healing and sealing. So I'll do a little, a, a, a mini version right now. Um, you call in your guides, your healers, you know, whatever your spiritual persuasion is. Um, I'm going to use Archangel Michael to help us. So I'll call in Archangel Michael, please come and be with us now. As we do this cord cutting, healing and meditation, please remove from us any and all inappropriate cords or connections um, from us and, um, we'll just go with the, the, from us version right now from us and please help us to heal in all ways from the damage that was caused by this inappropriate cord and connection. Um, Holy spirit, please heal us physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally where that cord was connected and please heal behind that and deeper than that. All of the reasons why we allowed that connection. Thank you so much. So be it. Amen. So, um, just in case you didn't know, amen and so be it are actually, um, have the same meaning. Um, and, um, when you do this meditation for yourself, you can try to visualize and it may pop into your head or it may not, um, visualize the, the nature of the cord. It could be a thin thread. It could be a tree trunk. It could be a chain that I've, seen, you know, seen, um, <coughs> all sorts of different cords and different ways of connecting. Um, and you can use, if you want to do it, if you want to cut the cord, you can use whatever tool you want. That might be cuticle scissors, you know, cute little scissors it could be, you know, kitchen shears. It could be a chainsaw. Um, it could be a flamethrower, you know, anything that you want to use. Um, and this will come to you spontaneously. This is part of your intuition. That's like, a critical component of you know being well as a person it's a core you know we talk about um, we talk about the five senses and then there's the sixth sense um, and it's actually really you've got to have you've got to have your intuition working um, and if you have these repetitive thoughts that you may go back to the point where you go that was actually a red flag that I didn't listen to well maybe at the time if you be gentle with yourself. You may realize it was more of a pink flag or an orange flag, and you were kind of hoping that it was going to fix itself. But um, uh, back to the cord cutting part. Um, it's crucial to allow um, things to pop in that are healing tools for you. Hey, welcome to the video. Um, definitely pop something in the comments if you have a question or um, a particular topic or if there's anything in particular that triggers you and I will help to address it like you know right now um, but I'm glad you're here um, so hey Amber thanks for the love um, glad you're here okay so um, Amber, definitely, if you get a chance, pop something in the comments so I can help to answer things directly for you. Um, we're talking about cord cutting. I'm explaining what it is, how it works, and how using your intuition as part of 
that healing um, meditation and process is really crucial. Um, and uh, gotcha. Amber wants to know why is she attracted to narcissists and or is she attracted to them? <laughs> There's a bunch of really good reasons. So first of all, they may be attracted to you because they love empaths. They love anybody with solid, strong, clear, good, positive <laughs> energy, which they will then work intentionally to destroy, ironically. But um, always keep in mind that this is a spiritual war. There are many battles in it, and it's spiritual. So if somebody, um, it, because basically they're being operated by evil, some people look at narcissism, um, you know, they talk about covert narcissism or malignant narcissism and all these different things. And I really don't see it that way. I see it as two types of narcissists. One that were evil before they came into this world and their, their straight on intention is to do evil. Um, and then there are people who um, I think have been spiritually warped and very badly hurt. Um, and they also become, um, you know, dangerous, harmful narcissists. So, um, why they may be attracted to you, um, is good. If you have good energy, um, they admire you, they, you make them look good. Um, it's all about how they can use you. Uh, disgusting as that is, that's the truth. They, they want to use you, use your energy, use your resources, um, but of course in the process, as I'm sure you already know, they will then um, destroy you in every way possible because then they also feed off of your angst, your anger. They'll, they'll eat any kind of energy um, and that's what you are. You're like, <laughs> I don't know why nibbling on a corn of cob came to mind, but that's what just popped into my head. You're, you're you know, considered a tasty, tasty niblet. Um, and you being attracted to them, um, I will say that some narcissists, most narcissists are really charming. Um, you know, they may be funny, attractive, um, adventurous. There's, you know, in, intense. Oh, you're an empath. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So one of the, so Amber Singh, she's definitely an empath. She has, when you say you have lots of friends, can you, um, Explain that a little bit more. Lots of empath friends or lots of friends in general that he wanted to use. And then also um, that they met when she was going through a divorce and very vulnerable. Yeah, grief. Grief is, a, I have a whole healing course on, on grief on my website um, because grief is devastating. Even if it's a normal part of life, you know, if you, you know, a family member passes away or, um, you know, even there, there's like a, a Richter list of stressful life events, um, you know, and, and going through grief, like divorce, um, you know, loss of some kind of a, ooh, relationship. Amber says, meaning, uh, she has lots of people that love her and care for her. I think he envied that. So Amber, that's unusual because, um, he must've been pretty arrogant because, um, narcissists will usually go for lowest hanging fruit. Oh, lost a baby on top of that. So, um, the f first thing that comes to mind is, um, I'm so sorry for your loss. It's both losses. Um, going, had lost a baby and going through a divorce at the same time. So that puts a huge, hi Jen. Thanks for joining the video. Um, having losses like that puts a huge hole in your aura and your energy field and your whole being. Um, and, um, I think, um, so I'll talk a little bit about healing, um, your aura. Um, oh, so much there. Okay. Deep in grief. Um, okay. So he felt your vulnerability, uh, your good energy could tell you were an empath. So you would be caring, kind, compassionate, and want to help him. Um, and yes. So when lots of people love you and care for you, so they may, you know, a, a narcissist may go into a relationship with somebody like you, um, 
hoping to be around that, but also sneakily knowing that those people are going to be feeding you and you're going to be feeding him. So it's like this, it's like, it's like, a, it's like an MLM. It's like a down level. Like, you know, one person, all he had to do was tap into one person, meaning you, and then branch out and suck off all these other people. Um, a lot of narcissists won't go for somebody that has really good loving support because it's harder to manipulate them. But the ones that are arrogant will happily go into that and look at it as a beautiful challenge to like chop off your relationship with all these people. Um, Amber, did your relationship with them, with the people that love and, and care for you, did they, did that suffer in your, during your relationship with the narcissist? Um, so I don't know why this keeps coming up, but I'm going to just mention that going back to your, your aura, your protective shield, you know, when you suffer grief or loss, um, and that can be moving, changing jobs. All of these things have a huge impact on you. There's like a top 10 list. Um, <coughs> and those, you know, death, um, divorce and, um, you know, all of those things, I'm sure you probably ended up moving on top of that. That's all of those things. Those are like the top three things. Um, um, they affect your energy system and the ways to heal that are to, first of all, you know, time you can't and dealing with it. So when you talk about, you know, death of a loved one, um, that's just not going to flip, you know, it's not going to fix overnight. Um, and it's, you can't bring that person back. Um, but you, the only thing that you can do is to continue to heal yourself as best you can and to honor that person that you lost. Um, you don't have to forget about them, um, or any of that stuff, but, but going through a healthy grieving process is really important. Your mom really loved him. Everyone did. Yeah, they are super great actors. They could make <laughs> a lot of money in, in movies. Um, that's extremely difficult. So Amber is saying that he was amazing to her until the day that he flipped. Um, and that w w took a year and a half. Um, so... Uh, cold comfort, Amber, but I have met people who've been um, married or in a relationship with a narcissist and they took, you know, decades and all of a sudden it was just a flip. And um, so did the, I'm sorry that you lost a relationship that you really cared about and were, you know, invested in somebody that you really loved in him. Um, but I am really glad that it ended as quickly as it did. I know that sounds terrible in a way, but, um, these things, these people don't stop and they're incredibly sneaky. Um, so, uh, one of the things that, one of the things that happens when you're grieving is that you can't notice everything, you know, you can't notice little flags. You can't, you're, you're not as in touch necessarily with your intuition. Um, so what I want to do is reassure you that you can be. Um, so that you don't continue to go through, um, unhealthy relationships or continue to attract narcissists. The biggest tip for getting rid of a narcissist, like right off the bat, if you don't know if somebody is, if you want to like run a test cause you're just, you know, you're feeling all anxious and you're worried, say no, just no, like regularly on a frequent basis and see how this person, you know, if you're dating somebody new or somebody new has come into your life, if they're a friend or co-worker um of course it's a little more difficult if the person is your boss but um <coughs> say no and see what happens um so going back to the, one of the things that you said amber about your um um your mom loving him and that everyone did um are you do you still have a good relationship with your family with your mom um so let me, um, I'm going to, till I, till I see your, your response to that I'm going to keep going for a little bit. So controlling your thoughts, um, mudras are a super handy mudras are like being able to give yourself acupuncture on the spot with nobody knowing. Um, and mudras are actually, they've been around for, you know, eons, ages and ages. This is a mudra. 
the okay symbol. Um, you know, if you're if you're Catholic or Buddhist, you've probably seen this. This is a mudra. Um, and I want to show you one for um, courage. So, like, if you're in a cycle where you're just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I want to go, like, this is for courage and for sticking strong and staying the course. No, at the not at the moment. You're not doing well with your mom. Okay. She betrayed you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, and I believe she may be a covert narcissist, too, sadly. Emotionally abusive. Oh, well, then that's, oh, that would explain why she liked him. That's hard. So you're, you're cleaning house at this point in your life on a bigger scale. You're realizing who's really there for you and who isn't. And I, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry you're going through that. I've been there too. It is hard. It is really, really hard. Um, but that may be one of the key reasons why you basically, if your mom is a narcissist, they prep you because they, they turn you into their own, you know, they mold you into what they want you to be. In order to survive childhood, you have to switch, change, turn, twist, um, contort to meet their needs because, you know, you're dependent upon them for your life. Um, so now part of the trick is undoing some of that stuff and letting your real self come out. So I advocate doing um, simple, baby, easy steps, like starting with what are some things that you really like to do that you haven't been doing um, or that you didn't do for a long time. And that could be as simple as coloring with crayons or um, making chocolate pudding. I have no idea where that came from, but all these little things. Um, the more you do it, when you just do one of those things, and you may find a huge resistance when you go to do it, just do it. Just be like, I am safe. I'm, you know, you know, I'm physically safe. I'm spiritually and emotionally safe. I'm going to do this little thing, even though I feel really anxious about it or worried or, you know, however you want to characterize that. But like, oh my God, because that, oh my God, probably goes back to childhood and to, you know, like really early wiring. And you can undo that. You can totally undo that, but little step by little step. Um, so just and so just do the activity, like sit down with some crayons and a piece of paper, just for example, do whatever it is that you like. But I'm just going to use that as an example. Sit down with the crayons, do a picture. It doesn't have to be a, a good picture. It can be anything you want. Just the fact that you're doing it. And then see how you feel. See how that inner part of you feels. And, and you're probably going to feel like, oh, that was really good. I really liked that. Yay. I got to do something I really liked. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, pat on the back. Yay. We can do it again. I didn't die. <laughs> you know? It's okay. And, <clears throat> um, um, and so, you know, little steps by little steps. Why do I say little steps by little steps? Because when you've already been traumatized and you've been through a lot, um, you need to do a little thing that bolsters your current, your courage, your confidence, and your sense of safety. And then you can build on it again and say, okay, that was really fun. I know I can go do coloring again. What's something else that I haven't done in a long time that I really want to do? Um, and then go do that and just keep doing little things, little things, little things. Spiritually cleanse yourself all the time. Why do I say that? Because it actually affects your thought patterns. And um, if you are spiritually gunked up, it's just like physical, like taking a shower. Taking, I mean, physically. So taking a shower cleans you physically and spiritually, especially if you wash your hair. Um, so wa wash that, you know, man right out of your hair. In my case, I'm keeping the gray. Promise I made to myself when I was 16, health -ish, you know, health reasons, you know, it's, I don't like toxins. Um, but, um, wash the crap out of your hair, wash it out of your thoughts, wash it off your body. And when you step out of the shower, you will probably feel lighter and cleaner and clearer. That is part of why you should do the cord cutting, um, when you're starting it, you know, a couple of times a day, three times a day. Um, because then you will start to feel yourself, your own thoughts, your own feelings. Now, one of the more advanced aspects of cord stuff, stuff is that someone can implant something in you, um, kind of like a light switch 
a remote controlled light switch and they can actually, you know, press a button from afar and make you feel like shit. So you want to clear and cleanse your system and get all of these things out. Um, it's kind of like if you've ever been, have you ever been around, um, you know, have you ever been swarmed by mosquitoes? They, um, you know, if you, you, if just one comes into a room, a closed room, you know, you'll probably hear the mosquito. You'll be like, there it is. That's where I need to go get it. And then you can just squash it and kill it and you're done. But if there's like a lot of them, it can reach a point where you're like, I really don't know how many there, there are. I don't know where they are. I can't get them off me. I can't keep them off me. Um, and you know, at a certain point that kind of like spiritually speaking, that gets internalized and you're just like, I don't know, I just hear a constant hum all the time. I don't know what it's from anymore. Well, it's because you need to clear the, I'm just going to, um, you need to clear the, the spiritual mosquitoes out of you. You need to clear your energy field and your space because those things can manipulate your emotions and your thoughts. So it's mostly your, they can manipulate both. Um, demonic beings whether you call them demons or some people call them jinns as like lower level evil spirit. Um, or, and then there are also high, you know, high level, very powerful evil spirits or beings that are involved, especially with narcissism. And it's a group. It's not just one at a time. You know, if, if one gets in, then it's, they open the door and more come in. This is why I advocate not doing any drugs. So no drugs, no drinking, no smoking, um, all of those things affect your, your spiritual well-being. Um, and honestly, they all affect your, your brain straight up. So you want to give your body, um, and your spirit the time, space, and ability to heal themselves. And they will, and they can, they just need you to remove the toxins. And this could be people, people, music, you know, violent movies, um, anything that affects you. Um, you need to do your best to clear them out of your life. Um, and, um, it can be like doing an elimination diet. I don't know if anybody who's had, um, food allergies, you cut back to the most core. And I have some, so I, I just hate this, but it, it works. Um, you cut back to like the core things that you know you can eat and then you, which means you wipe out, you know, most of things that you normally eat and you only eat a couple of things. Um, and then you slowly one at a time reintroduce one thing at a time. You know, if you think maybe I can take, you know, such and such, you have a little bit of it and then you see how you feel, but you do that only after you have reestablished a baseline. So you, when you cut out all the bad stuff, then you start to feel what you feel like when you feel normal. And it may be that you've never really had normal, normal in your life. You've never had the opportunity to be at normal or now you do and you are creating it. You're allowing yourself, you're allowing all the gunk and the nasty and the hurt to flow away, to fall off, whatever it is that visualizes best for you. Um, and then, um, and then you, you just gradually, you'll be able to better sense when something or someone isn't good for you. Um, so I'm going to go back to your initial question, Amber, which was, I want to know why I attract narcissists or am I attracted to them? Um, so <coughs> the part about why are you attracted to them? Yes. They're usually really charming, attractive, you know, they're usually good looking, sexy. Um, sometimes they can be funny. Um, and, um, but also, you know, if you suspect, so at this point, if you're suspecting your mom's a narcissist, she probably is. Um, those are patterns and styles that you're familiar with. Um, and if you're an empath, then probably, you know, part of your life mission here on, on earth in this incarnation, and probably in all of your other ones was to try to heal people. Um, and if you understand, um, you know, to a certain degree, maybe not fully consciously, but if you were understanding what, um, you know, about your mom and you may want to help somebody to not be that way. Cause you know, fundamentally that your mom's, 
you know, hurting and damaged, all narcissists are. Um, except the ones that are like super ultra evil and came in evil on purpose. Um, but that's, that can be part of what attracts you to them also. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon, um, Amber, but if you have another question, please go ahead and ask it. Um, and, uh, I want to mention that one of the ways, so part of the, part of the things that we, some of the things that we talked about for helping to control your thoughts are actually not, you know, your thoughts, which is part of, you know, that's what helps you to control things. There are things that have been affecting you, um, that were not actually your thoughts. Um, and, but that definitely influenced your thoughts. Um, so I'm not sure how long you've been out of this last relationship with the abuser. Um, <clears throat> but that, um, um, it takes time for your adrenal system and your physical brain to heal and relax so that, um, you, because there is actual damage that caught that that is caused by narcissistic abuse. So, um, as you start healing from all of these different angles and all of these different ways, you want to work on healing your adrenal system. You want to work on healing your, um, ability to sleep and sleep well, um, because that will help both your adrenal system and your brain. Um, and that will also help your, your thoughts. Um, um, but there's, there's so much more to this. So, um, you know, I want to invite anybody who would like to have a private healing session with me to do that, to have, you know, healing and coaching. I want to mention that I have a course called Get Your Life Back, and um, I've actually given you a bunch of things out of that course, but there are over a hundred more in the course. So it's basically like a toolbox um, that's got all these different tools. So you can walk in, you know, walk in, it's online. You can do it from your phone, um, you know, day or night and find the tool that fits the need that you have at that moment. Um, so whether it's a cord cutting or um, crystals to work with, um, because that, those help too. Um, I am a big fan of using anything that you don't have to overthink or over talk about. Talking's really helpful, coaching's really helpful, therapy can be really helpful in the right circumstances, but um, the, the toolbox is full of things that you can just walk in and say, I feel this, and click on this feeling, this symptom, and it will um, pull up a bunch of tools for you to use for that particular situation. All right, well, Amber, thank you for being on this call. Thank you for answering my question in the poll um, in the group. And I look forward to um, connecting more with you. And anybody who's watching this later, definitely, you know, pop your questions in here um, and um, answer some of the poll things. You're most welcome, Amber. You're most welcome. I wish you the very best. Um, and definitely, you know, stay active in the group. So I have one request, um, which is that people be active in the group. Um, you know, leave comments, share the posts, um, you know, amongst each other. Um, and, um, you know, and, and really be involved because otherwise nobody sees anything. Um, and I can't do this for free. So um, I don't want to put time and energy into something if it's not really helping people. So if it is helping you, yay, I'm so glad. And I am so glad, Amber. And I am grateful and, and thankful to be able to help you today because that is my mission in life. Um, but I also want to help as many people as possible. So everybody keep sharing, keep commenting, keep liking. Um, and, uh, and you can also find me out on some of the other platforms and I'm going to encourage everybody to please, um, consider signing up for my newsletter. Um, if you like podcasts, I, um, I've got links for that. I'm on Anchor FM and you can also get it through Spotify and, um, Google play and all of those things. Um, but YouTube, um, so there's this group in Facebook, but honestly, I have had so many challenges with this. I, I am not too psyched about Facebook. Um, there's my website, um, and, um, uh, a bunch of, and Instagram. 
Um, I'm also on TikTok. Um, still trying to learn that platform a little bit. But everybody, thanks for being here. And I look forward to connecting with you. Many blessings, everybody. Bye, Amber.